Hi, it's DeWire. It is February the 2nd, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk about the Super Bowl, but remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own, especially here. Just consider this to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, as longtime subscribers know, I've had a futures hedge on Tampa Bay at four to one and higher based on bets earlier in the season. For the record, I also had hedges on other teams, right? But um, my strategy here for the Super Bowl will simply be to hedge out for profit. If you are fortunate enough to have had a hedge on Tampa, then that's my advice, right? Hedge out so you at least get your money back. Secure that first before you venture out into the wilderness and bet on other plays. But there are other plays that I plan to make on this Super Bowl. The purpose of this video is to highlight my belief in the under 56 and a half points. Let me also point out too that right now the number is 56 and a half. Historically, the over under tends to creep up in the last few days before the Super Bowl. So if you're a little queasy about the 56 and a half, just wait a little bit. You might be able to get 57 or maybe even 57 and a half before kickoff. I like the under. Let's talk about why. First, on footballoutsiders.com, a great site, I recommend it. They've rated Tampa Bay as having the fifth best defense, according to DVOA, in the National Football League. Fifth best. Understand, that's the unit in this game with the distinct advantage. Kansas City is not defensively blessed. Tampa is. Tampa is an elite defense. Also, in their last two games, they've beaten Drew Brees and, more recently, for the second time, likely MVP Aaron Rodgers. Right? They sacked Aaron Rodgers multiple times in both games. Green Bay did not have an answer for Jason Pierre-Paul or Shaq Barrett, speed rushers who can come in and close on a quarterback. Understand, Kansas City is missing at least two linemen. Their offensive line for the Super Bowl is going to be shaky. One of the linemen got hurt in their last game. Pat Mahomes is going to be under pressure. Let's also consider how outsized the 56 and a half points is. I want people to consider the fact that the chief offense was stopped in last year's Super Bowl. Right? The same guys, Tyreek Hill, Pat Mahomes, Trevor, uh, Travis Kelsey. Understand, after three quarters last year, the Chiefs only had 10 points. After they exploded in the fourth quarter for 21 points, including some key third down plays, they won the game, but the final score was 31-20. Only 51 points scored in last year's Super Bowl. That's this current Chief team. That's the most recent Super Bowl. Let's also look at their November 29th game against these Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Understand, the Chiefs started fast. First quarter, Tyreek Hill, two touchdowns. The Chiefs had 20 points at halftime. The score at halftime was 20 to 7. Tampa Bay made adjustments. Tyreek Hill was a non factor in the second half of that game. The Chiefs 
in the second half of that game only scored seven points. The final score was 27-24, 51 points. Again, five and a half points under the 56 and a half points. Let's also get philosophical here. Unless you pick up a Jerry Rice in the middle of the offensive run, which is what happened in the 1980s with the San Francisco 49ers, right? Unless you pick up an all-time player in the middle of a great run, great offenses after two or so years get figured out. We've seen this before. An offense that looks so good, you think it was gonna last forever. Right? Talk to the people with some gray hair. They'll tell you about Ike Bruce, now in the Hall of Fame, a seven-time Pro Bowler. Across from him was Torrey Holt, a seven-time Pro Bowler. In the backfield was Marshall Falk, the 1999 Offensive Player of the Year, the 2001 Offensive Player of the Year, himself a seven-time Pro Bowler and at quarterback, was two-time MVP winner, current Hall of Famer, Kurt Warner, right? Think about that team for a moment, the greatest show on turf. That team was so dominant that in 1999, Kurt Warner won the MVP. In 2000, Marshall Falk won the MVP. In 2001, Kurt Warner won the MVP. The same team three back-to-back -back MVPs, right? Think about it. Well, on February the 3rd, 2002, in Super Bowl 36, they played the New England Patriots. The other quarterback was Tom Brady. Same guy, much younger. The Patriots took the air out of the ball. They held the Rams to three points entering the fourth quarter. Three, now I'll concede. This is before Spygate. There's some questions about this game. There's some interviews where some Ram players, some key Ram players, including Hall of Famers, have questioned the legitimacy of New England's defensive performance that day. Right? Ram players claim that as Kurt Warner was calling out the play, right, and these were plays the Rams had not run for more than a month, the New England Patriots were making adjustments. But just understand, the Rams lost that game 20 to 17. Only 37 points scored in that game. And the Rams had one of the best offenses in history. They were young, they looked unstoppable, they had Hall of Fame talent at multiple positions. I know it's hard to envision, but understand, as dominant as the Kansas City offense looks, right, Pat Mahomes, as young as he is, already has a regular season MVP and a Super Bowl MVP under his belt. As dominant as they are, We've seen dominant offenses controlled in Super Bowls. And here, there's a familiarity because these two teams played in the regular season. Also, the Chiefs, as the defending Super Bowl champions, aren't sneaking up on anyone. Right? The Chiefs have been to three consecutive AFC championship games. They've hosted the last three. Everyone knows about Pat Mahomes. Everyone knows about Travis Kelsey. Everyone knows about Tyreek Hill. Tampa Bay with the fifth best defense in the National Football League. A defense that just beat the Saints. Think about that offense. And Green Bay the top-rated offense in the NFL. 
right? That defense has already played Kansas City. Everyone knows what Kansas City does. And Kansas City has a very shaky offensive line. Let's also talk about game flow. Now, this might surprise some people. But if you fast forward to February the 4th, 2018, Super Bowl 52, did you know that Tom Brady arguably has the best Super Bowl statistically for a quarterback in history? Right? Think about it. Just for a moment. If Pat Mahomes has a good game, how many passing yards is he going to throw for? Well, he's going to have to have a great game behind a shaky offensive line an injured offensive line, to do what Tom Brady did that day against Philadelphia. That day, Tom Brady passed for 505 passing yards. 505, three TDs. His quarterback rating wasn't 100, it wasn't 105, it wasn't 110. It was 115.4. Now, he didn't win the MVP. Nick Foles did. Tom Brady did not win the game. If anybody on the field this weekend knows the value of pace, of taking the air out of the football, of slowing down the game to win the game, it's going to be Tom Brady who, let's face it, is practically an offensive coordinator on the field, right? He's the guy who beat the greatest show on turf, right? The Patriots were double-digit underdogs in that game. Brady beat them. Brady's also the guy who lost a Super Bowl in which he threw 505 passing yards, Right? By the way, that's the only Super Bowl he lost other than the two he lost to Eli Manning. So, I suspect the play calling, the audibles that Tom Brady is going to do are going to be done with the clock in mind. Right? Think about how Bill Parcells approached another high-flying offense, the Buffalo Bill offense. You remember them, Thurman Thomas, Jim Kelly, James Lofton, Andre Reid. Tampa Bay is going to want to slow this game down. Tom Brady doesn't want another shootout where he ends up with 500 plus passing yards and a loss. After all, this is the guy who beat the greatest show on turf. So I'm expecting the play calling on Tampa's side, to slow down the clock. Brady has two excellent running backs, Leonard Fournette, who's been dynamite, and Jones. Right, Tampa theoretically could run the ball 40, 50 times in this game. Tom's not going to want a shootout. Let me also say, too, that Pat Mahomes has to be careful here. With a four-man rush, not even a lot of blitzing, with a four-man rush, Tampa had Aaron Rodgers at times under siege. Pat Mahomes threw picks in last year's Super Bowl. Here, he's not going to have time to run around the pocket, look downfield, hope someone breaks open. Folks, that's, that's not going to happen. He's going to be on the clock. He might throw picks in this Super Bowl because a pass rush will cause a quarterback to rush the throws. We'll have the wide receiver not in exactly the position that that wide receiver is expected to be in after practice sessions. So I'm expecting, I'm expecting the game to be in the low 50s. 
just like their earlier game was this year. There's a chance that this game might feature picks. There's a chance that Kansas City might be forced to run the football. Bruce Arians already saw Tyreek Hill blow out his secondary in the first quarter of their regular season game. That's not going to happen here. They know about Tyreek Hill. They take away the deep threat. Kansas City is going to have to make up the yards in other ways. I think Sammy Watkins is a key person in this game. Right? They're going to have to have another wide receiver that they can rely on because I'm guessing Arians is going to take away Tyreek Hill or at least minimize him somewhat. So I like the under 56 and a half. Understand, this number would have won in last year's Super Bowl. Understand, these two teams have played each other before. Understand, you have a veteran quarterback who has been in this situation multiple times and who has learned that you can throw for 500 plus yards in a Super Bowl and lose. What I want to caution everyone on is the incomplete information we have right now. I'll concede the situation with the safeties in Tampa Bay secondary is a bit up in the air, right? I don't know whether the two guys who are banged up are going to play all four quarters or whether they're going to be 100%. There's been some bluffing happening. No question about it. But we know, we know Kansas City's offensive line is decimated. That's what we know. And we know Pat Mahomes' quarterback style has him moving around the pocket. Pat's a guy who likes to move, isn't he? We also know that Shaq Barrett and Jason Pierre-Paul are incredibly fast. These are speed rushers. Tampa's defense is aggressive. We know these two gave Drew Brees problems. We know these two gave Aaron Rodgers problems. I like the under 56 and a half in this game. Let me just say that some of the prop bets flow from that. Kansas City. I like the under 30 and a half points. Right? There's going to be a concerted effort to prevent KC from having big plays. In other words, there'll be a preference for Travis Kelsey to have several seven-yard receptions as opposed to Tyreek Hill beating you deep. There's also going to be proper use of the clock by Tampa Bay. Rushing plays. Tom Brady could start out, could be tearing up Kansas City secondary might feel that big plays are in the secondary. But he's still going to want to run the football because he's going to understand that Kansas City's offense is high-powered. The best way to play against Pat Mahomes is to keep Pat off the field, on the sidelines. I think that's going to result in a slower pace I'm expecting a slower Super Bowl. I like the under 56 and a half points. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.